So I thought the best way to go about talking about this painting was to give context as to what inspired this painting, who the model is, why I chose an ocean, um, how I came about starting this piece, and how a little idea or a little sketch turned into the original painting that um, is featured in this video. So uh, I'm just gonna kind of walk you through my process, talk a little bit about the tools that I'm using, uh, share some insights to, yeah, the inspiration and why I felt the need to to express myself and to express myself in this particular way. So to backtrack a little bit, um, December rolled around, we had their second hard closure. The first one was like, we're on this together. And then the second one, I was like, F this, I hate this. Went into a deep depression and was just really struggling. I didn't feel the need to draw, didn't feel the need to paint, was just trying to take a break from life. And then I saw this really beautiful model in a photo uh, featuring Luis Escandelari, and I was like, wow, she has these striking eyes. Like they're just, they gaze right into your soul. Um, and I guess that was enough to just snap me out of my, <laughs> out of my slump and to get me off the couch and out of my bed and in my studio. So I started doing this little oil sketch with uh, black and white, and I thought I'd just keep it really simple. It was pretty rugged. I was actually painting over an old painting that I didn't like, so I was just like recycling a canvas essentially. And uh, sh she just started to like slowly emerge, and I really liked like the, the structure of her bones and her haircut, and she had this almost angelic, but also very intense look about her. From there, I was like, this is a really cool thing. Like maybe I should expand from this. Maybe I should sell this on my six by six auction Instagram page. Like I had no idea what to do with it. Um, and then fast forward, I don't know, a couple weeks later, I'm still in my slump. I'm still struggling really hard. Uh, I'm listening to driver's license on repeat and I was just like missing like the gym and missing traveling and missing eating out and I was like maybe I should expand from this idea so I took out my sketchbook um, I just started like sketching around and I was like oh maybe I should use the same model but just paint to like an ocean or wave interface and this was just kind of an extension from the the male version I did where it's a gentleman in a suit and a tie um, and he has these also very striking eyes and it's dead on. There's a horizon line with the ocean. And I was like, well, maybe I can do something kind of similar, but just do the female version of that. Um, and so I just did this little sketch and I drew her face out and then I added the wave over it. So I ended up like erasing my lines. But um, I was like, well, that's kind of cool. Like, you know, maybe I could do this and render it in a bigger scheme. So fast forward now, another two months or th no, I'm lying, let's say three months later, and I'm struggling with my art again. I'm going through these like back and forths of like being inspired, not being inspired. I did a bunch of seascapes and I was like, well, I just did some ocean inspired scenes. Maybe I should expand from that and create this uh, portrait uh, in black and white with the colorful ocean. So that's what I did. Um, I had this square canvas that was like sitting around that had been prepped for I don't know, probably around two years. And I was like, well, maybe now's the time. <laughs> I started adding in the the basic shapes and kind of blocking it all in. Um, my initial stages, I'm not thinking so much about details. I'm just trying to get like the overall composition. I'm just trying to get the proportions correct. And honestly, I messed up. I, the eyes were like so big that they turned out to be almost buggy. <laughs> Sorry. So I was like, all right, let's redo that. So I ended up having to refine the eyes, push them down, make them a little smaller, you know, bring them together a little bit, and then just start reworking the piece again. So yeah, I usually work in multiple sessions. I'm not like at a la prima, one and go. I definitely let the paint dry, come back, cover, readjust, push things around, and use a lot of glazes. Um, I'm a huge fan of using liquid medium for that, uh, but Lately, I've been getting really into using a, a blend of half stained oil with half Gamsol, and it's just a great way to cover a lot of ground on the canvas. It makes the paint a little bit more liquid, and so you have a little bit more, uh, you'll have a little bit more time to work, honestly. It doesn't dry as quickly. So with this piece, it was 
a little bit of a challenge. I really wanted to like have the focus just be on her eyes, just like striking and glowing and just so full of energy and light. And I wanted that to be contrasted by this very calm and soothing ocean. Um, <laughs> my life was just so crazy and all over the place and um, I had no structure. And so I felt like her look kind of gave this sense of like inner peace and calm that I just was really seeking in my life. So I was like, maybe even if things are quite like absolutely wild, even if the world makes no sense, even everything is going to <laughs> going to flames, um, at least I can find inner peace and be serene and be calm, cool and collected. So I just started painting. And what happens when I start painting is that sometimes it's really difficult. It's like I really, I really have to work hard to show up. And other times I'm just like completely in flow and so absorbed by the work that I'm doing and really enjoying it. And all of a sudden I like look up and it's been three hours or like a couple hours or like now it's nighttime, like whatever it may be. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I definitely had that feeling throughout this uh, process of painting this piece. Um, I really felt like I got these like insights for these moments of like aha moments. And then also contrasted by those moments of just like, I don't know where to go. Like, where do I go from here? Like what's, what's missing? Why does it feel off? Like what, what am I, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> um, and it's kind of just that balance of like constantly asking myself, what does this painting need? What can I do to make this better? What can I do to really bring this piece to life where I feel like it's really conveying something, really expressing something, really connecting with the viewer. And, um, yeah, with this piece, uh, I think overall I'm really happy with how it turned out. I wasn't expecting anything <laughs> to be like, wow, it's the best work I've ever done, but I'm actually very proud of it. I feel like there is definitely, definitely something to it where I'm like, okay, kudos, like you're learning, Bo. <laughs> Um, yeah, and also, like, something weird happened in the middle of it. Like, I started painting, and I was, like, just starting to add, like, the ocean, the wave piece. I did, like, the first layer of that, and I shared it on, like, a reel on Instagram. And, like, I share a bunch of reels and a bunch of posts on Instagram, and, like, nothing ever happens usually. Um, but I shared it, and all of a sudden, a bunch of, like, art Instagram accounts started reposting it, and it kind of went somewhat viral in a way. Um, gained, like a thousand followers in like a day and I was like all right that's cool like that's new um also lost a bunch afterwards when they're like oh it's not just cool paintings it's also like random sketches and like random watercolors and gouache like I want just the face and portrait series so it's like well sometimes I do seascapes sometimes I do landscapes sometimes I do circle panels I keep it interesting and fun for myself so anyway so I posted it and a bunch of people just started sharing it and I was like whoa this is cool um, so I think I'm definitely like onto something like, yeah, it's a little bit weird and kind of random and kind of off, it's like off putting or offsetting a little bit, but I, I think there's also a lot of beauty in the bizarre and like the, 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 the surreal or like the dreamlike, um, the psychedelic, you know, whatever that may be. It doesn't always have to be just traditional. It doesn't always have to be typical it doesn't always have to be normal it can be different and I feel like this one definitely <laughs> exemplifies different <laughs> um also Lisa reposted it super sweet she's an absolute sweetheart um she's not only beautiful but she's also very friendly does a lot of sharing online talks a lot about her personal you know personal life and the things that she's working on She's working on a lot of things that are like around personal development and meditation and clean eating and just healthy living. And I, uh, she's definitely someone that I think is really, really cool. Uh, so yeah, this piece, uh, planning on sending it over to 19 Karen Gallery in Australia. So I'm probably gonna be packaging it all together and shipping it to that side of the world. Uh, Terry, she's been representing my work since 2016. She's the first gallery to showcase my paintings um, and the first one to give me an opportunity to sell my work in a space. Um, when I first created the Off the Grid collection, 
I created a 16-piece collection. I applied to so many different places and none of them took me seriously. I got a bunch of rejection letters, um, no responses. You know, galleries are busy and I would like wait to see if there's like open submission season and um, or if there's like art contests to like get featured in things and like nothing would ever really happen. And after like almost eight months of doing this, like finally 19 Karen Gallery reached out to me actually on Instagram and they're like, we'd love to showcase your work and just start having this conversation. And I shipped over three pieces, um, sold two of them, shipped over another two, and then just started like showcasing my work. And I just like occasionally ship out pieces there throughout the year. Um, and we've had a great relationship. I think it's a great gallery. Um, it's on the Gold Coast. I've never been there personally, but I'd love to visit. Um, but it's just so wild that I had to like ship my work all the way across the world to be able to have it on walls in a gallery space. So like trying to find a place locally to feature my work, especially this series, because I know like landscapes and seascapes are pretty easy to sell. Um, I haven't found it too difficult to get those works to like be featured in places or to sell those pieces, but the off the grid collection for some reason is just like, it's so specific. So it's like, it really needs to find its audience or its audience needs to find it. Um, kind of like this mutual relationship. <laughs> yeah, um, it's like the whole thing of like, make something for someone, not for everyone. So it's like, I didn't want to necessarily make something that everybody would like. It's just like, this is what I really like and I'm hoping that someone else will like it too. A lot of people have been mentioning that they thought that I was originally painting a mask over the face and due to COVID, it totally makes sense. Uh, but in reality, I really wanted this seascape to be an extension of the thoughts and feelings that I've been having and to be more of like a window into the nature of the, the model um, or into just like human nature. The... The ocean has so many different faces depending on the weather conditions and the currents and the tides and depending on the kind of light that's reflecting on the surface. And um, regardless of whether it's a crazy stormy sea or a super calm, quiet um, afternoon, the ocean still remains water at the end of the day. Um, it's this life-affirming gift that is one of the greatest things on this planet. You know, sometimes weather conditions will influence it and terrorize it and turn it into this thing that's, you know, monstrous and aggressive and intense. And then other times it'll be like a beautiful sunny day and it'll just be magical being on the water. I guess if I had to have like one takeaway about this painting, um, it's that we too are like the ocean. Like we too can be influenced by powers outside of our control and we too can be influenced by the state of the world. We are as much a reflection of our environment as it is of us. And you know, if, if COVID got you down, it's okay. Um, take your time. When you're good and ready, you'll get back on your feet and you'll forge your new path. Just remember that the world is healing and so are you. One of the things I have to remind myself about my art and about my practice is that even at my lowest lows, art always seems to be there for me. Um, even when circumstances let me down, even when people hurt me or life gets really crazy or intense, um, I've always found a lot of comfort and solace in painting. And this, <laughs> this painting has gone through so many different skins and could have gone in so many different directions and yet it decided to become this one thing and to to show its true colors and its true form and um i really really enjoyed and <laughs> really am grateful that i had this painting as a sort of comfort and also as a form of company um, during quarantine and during COVID uh, because it really taught me a lot about resilience and all those life lessons about just being patient and holding tight and trusting that things will work out and that if you just keep showing up and keep going and keep moving forward that eventually you'll arrive in a better place. And so far that's been very true. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm very, I'm just very happy to be a painter. I'm really, 
I feel very fortunate to be able to call this something that I, I love doing and something that I that is sustaining me inside, but also being able to make sales and be able to continue making more work. That's really been the journey of these last few years. And I'm always, you know, very hesitant to look too far ahead. And especially with this past year, it's hard to do so. But just knowing that like, as long as I just keep doing this and keep showing up and keeping honest, um, the work will reveal itself and the paintings that are yet to be made will undoubtedly be a story that needs to be told.